What's up to all of my learned magician friends out there? My name is Jeff Kowalk and you are watching Erudite Magic. We always have a very special episode for you, but today I am so excited. I'm going to take you behind the scenes into my own personal thoughts. That's right, I'm going to take you as far back into this as I can. And I'm going to teach you exactly how you can extract you from yourself. Extract you from yourself. That's deep. Let's go. So I've had a number of you guys talk about how do I journal? I've mentioned this in a previous video before and then in last week's video talking about Theron Christensen's book, he also advised using a journal to keep track of your thoughts and ideas. And so I would like to take a deeper dive into how exactly do you do that? So what are all these? Well, these are the journals that I have kept over the years. One thing you're gonna notice right away is that, well, they're all different. And that's okay. And I think that needs to be the very first thing that you recognize about the process of journaling your thoughts. That if you want to be creative and you want to track things that are important to you, you have to set perfectionism aside. Don't worry about the fact that they're all different ones. In fact, I don't think, yeah, that's right. I have not paid for a single journal. These were all gifts at some conference or another or someone at work said, hey, I don't want this. Do you want this? And I said, sure, I'll take it. I'll fill it with ideas. And yes, this video is going to get very personal because these are my thoughts and I'm gonna make myself vulnerable by sharing them with you in the hopes that will help you to become better at sharing your thoughts with yourself. Uh, this video is gonna be different. I'm probably gonna jump from a few things, uh, jump around a little bit, so bear with me. I think it will be profitable for you and I think it will help you in your journey. Let's give a quick overview here of what you should be seeking to do. Who should journal? In my opinion, everyone should journal. Everyone should write something down about what they're currently thinking. Why? Because thoughts are a funny thing. They're very fleeting. So I've had a number of really great ideas. Now I can't tell you what those great ideas are because I didn't write them down. And later on in the day when I thought that I could remember what they were, mm, I couldn't. I mean, how many of you have decided in your mind you were going to go to the other room to tell your spouse or significant other something? You walked into the other room and you said, hey, I have to tell you something. And you couldn't remember. Sometimes it helps to retrace your steps, but at other times that thought's just gone. <laughs> so a journal is going to help you to not lose thoughts. And that's the most important thing here. You are an ideas machine. I don't care how you view yourself. You may think that, ah, Jeff, you don't understand. I'm not creative. I don't have any original thoughts. You don't need to have a completely original thought. Every thought that you have is probably unique to you. And you need to be recording those because that's your inner voice telling you, hey, Jeff, this is who I am. Maybe you should write this down. Your inner voice doesn't mean it in a nagging sort of way. But your inner voice wants you to know what's important to you. And the best way to do that is to write it down. Enough said about that. Everyone should be writing things down. Now let's get into on what you should be writing. I have a bunch of free journals here that I have collected over the years. And I don't always even fill them all before I move on. You don't have to have a journal format. You can use eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. To make it easier for yourself, I recommend whatever you do use is somehow bound together. So even if that's an eight and a half by 11 legal pad, at least those sheets are together so that when you go back through your notes, you're not just collecting things here and there. Now, you may have other solutions that work for you and don't ever let that keep you from writing down a good idea. If you have a good idea and you don't have your journal with you or your yellow pad of paper, write it down on a scrap piece of paper if that's all you have. That is a pretty good idea. I probably need to put that in here. If you write it down on some sort of extraneous piece of paper, later that day, if you're emptying your pockets and you find that piece of paper and you still think it's a good idea, you can put it in your journal or with all of your other thoughts. What should you be writing down? Everything, literally. 
I keep this close to me every day at work because I might be sitting there on a conference call or doing something and something might just weirdly, randomly pop into my head. And there's a lot of studies on this that sometimes your biggest moments of inspiration will happen based on something else that you're doing. So you always need to have something available, which is why you need to get in the habit of carrying something with you. I always have this pen clipped on my shirt or stuck in my pocket. And then in my other pocket, I typically have an Austerlin pad of paper. And the reason for that is with a pen and that piece of paper, I'm always ready to perform as a mentalist. More importantly, in fact, is that I always have something on which I can write an idea. Let's get into some of the meat of how I organize my thoughts. And I'm gonna share some of this with you. I told you I was gonna be vulnerable and I will. So first of all, when I open this, you can, you can see right away that I have some sticky notes. So sticky notes are a great way to supplement whatever it is that you're writing down because you can always go back and if a page is full and you want more information on there, just slap a sticky note or two or six on that page so that you can keep your thoughts together. Sticky notes are some of my favorite things. All right, so here's a blast from the past. I'll share this with you, but back in April 2020, I had some ideas about a YouTube business idea. And right up top, I have written, I wanna help magicians get started. Ta-da, here we are. <laughs> now, this is just a brain dump here. There's a lot of things on here that I never ended up doing, and that's okay, that's the point here, is that you're going to revisit these ideas later. But you wanna write down even just bullet points even if you don't end up doing everything that you write down, that's okay because now that idea is stored for a later date when you're ready. I have performance ideas about things that I could perform for Instagram or Zoom. Whenever I get ready to review a book, I will revisit that book. Of course, I, I read everything that I review here, but I will write down some thoughts that I wanna make sure that I get across that are important. Quotes that I love from the book. But up at the top, I always put whatever the topic is and the date. The date's very important because I like to have a chronological view of my ideas. When I go back through old notebooks, I can often find when was I thinking this, and then later if I have an idea that supplements that, I can go back and add on information to the original entry, if you will, or I can just create a new one. I mentioned before you're gonna have to give up your perfectionism, and that's what I want you to understand. Don't hold off writing things until you're sure that you're organized correctly or that it's going to make sense or that you can find it later. It doesn't matter. Start now. The one area where I'm deficient in my journaling and coming up with ideas is that I don't do a very good job of drawing pictures. That's because I'm a terrible artist. I have friends though who do draw doodles in here and you really just need a place for your imagination to run free, to be creative, and to be yourself so that you can unleash the potential within you. I write down ideas for tricks. I have some improvements on some Trost tricks from May 2020. Some of these were old ideas that I've had and I've performed, and then others were brand new ideas. Some are just empty entries. I have one here on Trost's open prediction. Not everything pans out, as you can see, and that's okay. You have to be okay with that. Sometimes there's an interesting byplay between something you see online and I try not to spend a lot of my time on social media. It's cool, it's fun, and I hope that you know, you'll continue to follow me on social media, but it can be a giant waste of time. During the pandemic, I was watching an Instagram live session between Ben Earl and David Williamson, and I saw something there that David Williamson was sharing about the slap shift from Buckley's card control. And I thought that that was such a cool idea. And knowing the fleeting moments of Instagram, I decided to capture that thought by writing it down. May 8th, 2020, I was looking at David Regal's Simpatico, which is a really cool card trick using two different participants. And I had some really good notes in here that it's not about me, it's about them. That I needed more opportunities to showcase audience members. If I was able to sacrifice a card trick to showcase those audience members, that's an easy sacrifice for me since card tricks aren't really the, the main thing that I do. Okay, now that you've written down some ideas, what do you do with all this? Periodically, you need to go back through your ideas. Ideas, as long as they're captured, they don't really have an expiration date. They don't ever go stale. They're just waiting on some new breakthrough. Most of the time people think that a breakthrough means you're coming up with something, a brand new slight, but that's not the case. True advancement in magic happens when people combine ideas in ways that haven't heretofore been considered. So later you're going to be reading back through and you're going to say, wow, that was a great idea. Put it in your newest notebook. Reference the fact that you referenced this date and put your updated thinking in there. 
Worst case scenario is that someday your grandkids will open this and think of all the great ideas that you had if you never revisit them. Best case scenario, you'll revisit your own ideas and see what a brainstorm that you had a year ago and that you didn't even remember that you had. Trust me, I have gone through notebooks and thought, wow, I had no idea I was thinking that deeply about this. So what about electronic journals? I've got no problem with that. Whatever system works for you. And in fact, there are times that I use an app like Evernote to capture an idea if I don't have pen and paper with me, which is very rare. But if I don't, I'll capture it in Evernote. I just don't like to store things on my phone because I get sucked into social media or doing something else on my phone. Which brings me to an important point. If you really wanna get the most out of your journaling, reading, or thought process, you need to set aside some time dedicated to thinking. I know that sounds strange, but if you wanna get the most from your ideas, you have to spend time with them. It's like weightlifting. If you don't ever go to the gym, when you go, you're gonna get worn out and you're not gonna really achieve much, but you have to start. Once you've been weightlifting for a while, it becomes easier, you can do more heavy lifting. Why am I even talking about this? Do I look like the kind of person that should be giving weightlifting analogies? Anyway, the more you exercise your brain, the more capable your brain is of creating ideas and it gets into a rhythm of doing so. If you're not intentional about your time, there's a pretty good chance that it'll fall to the back burner. So you need to make time for what's important and if ideas in your magic and creative thinking are important to you, then set aside some time to do it. For me, I like to do my thinking in the morning, I'll do some reading, and then I will sit there with my journal and I will write down ideas as they come to me about things that I wanna follow up, sometimes to-do lists or future episodes of this show. Whatever happens to come to me, I'll write down that inspiration and then revisit it throughout the day so that my brain in the back of my mind while I'm working on other things can continue to work on these great ideas that I had. Let me give you a couple of resources outside the magic world that will help you with your creativity. One of my inspirations for all of this was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. It's a pretty old book and you can, I think you can get this for free to read on resources. I'm gonna drop a link to a basic version on Amazon. But the entire premise of the book is that thoughts are things. And it's, it's really true. Thoughts become things when you write them down. If you don't write them down, they're just abstract moments that you might forget. But once you've written them down, it now becomes an actual thing. You can look at it, someone else can look at it. There's an idea. Is it worth pursuing? Start by John Acuff. If you haven't read John Acuff, hilarious guy, really easy to read. This book is very helpful to get you going. So I know for a lot of us, perfectionism is an enemy and you think, well, I'm not really ready for this because I don't have the right pen or the right paper or the right ideas. And John gives you some really great ideas to get going, get started, just do it. And then you can iterate later. Easy read. And I think there's an audiobook. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey, the classic. He talks about being proactive in this book. And that's exactly what we're trying to do here is we're trying to be proactive and set aside time to think about what the future might look like for us, whether that's through our magic acts or tricks or ideas, and then move towards that better future for ourselves and our families. And then the power of habits. This is really interesting because it talks about eliminating things that could distract you from whatever habit it is that you're wanting to build. There are a couple other books that I don't actually have physical copies right here. Brian Tracy's Goals has been very crucial to my development to write down goals and giving you a process to achieve whatever it is that you want. Because if you don't write down what you want, you're not really gonna get it. And then John C. Maxwell's How Successful People Think. This is some of my inspiration for setting aside time, dedicated to thinking. He has some really good ideas about how you can think better thoughts and I'm not gonna get into reviewing that book, but I think it could be a good resource for you. There are many other resources, so if you have other books that you found to be profitable in your own personal development, especially related to thinking or writing things down, you know, please drop a comment down below. I'm always interested to hear from other people and the tools and resources that have helped shape them into who they are. The bottom line is, I think that you are a beast. You're an animal, you are ready to come up with ideas that are gonna just rock the world and certainly rock your world and your family's world, but perhaps the broader spectrum of magicians out there. But you can't get there until you're willing to commit to those ideas. You're gonna come up with a lot of stuff that is ridiculous, has no future, it's gonna die on the vine. You're gonna be sad that you ever really had that idea, but that's 
part of the process. At least writing them down because also some of your most brilliant ideas are going to start that way. They're going to look like junk that you can't believe your brain ever came up with that turd, <laughs> for lack of a better term. And yet, once you've revisited it in light of another routine or idea or slight or something someone said, you're going to find out that that's the most polished gem in your entire act. So you got to take the good with the bad. I hope I didn't ramble too much during this episode. I'm trying to be helpful and share with you what's worked for me. You're seeing some of my thoughts behind the scenes about my ambitions and things I'm working on, and I hope that that's helpful for you. If this has been helpful for you, I hope you'll consider subscribing, liking, and commenting down below with what you found to be helpful so I can shape future episodes. As always, I appreciate you watching. Drop some comments down below. I'm going to put some links to some of these books and uh, journals. If you don't need it, great. Get some free ones. If you do need it, I hope you'll consider clicking on the links below. Uh, they are affiliate links, which means that I do earn a very small amount. Costs you nothing extra, but it helps me keep the channel going. So thanks for that. Until next time, all my erudite friends, keep reading.